Um, okay, Barbara, you made a comment. You're not completely oh shadow ban. So I, I assume it's the title. Maybe I should go back and change the title. I don't know. Um, I guess I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, let's see here. All right. So who else is in here from out of town? Oh, here we got uh, Kimmy Tucker Murray. Hi, Clint. Uh, miss dancing to your music at Tom Ryan's. Yeah, we'll be back. Don't worry. We'll be back. No worries on that. If you're still here, Kimmy, appreciate your patience. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, I don't think we got the Kevin originally. Clint, how you doing from your favorite cotton farmer? Turn on the light, look dark, miss your live music. Actually, um, I'm going to go ahead. I, I had someone come in to try to help with that during the feed. It was so bright in here that I didn't actually turn on the, the, the lighting. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to turn this towards uh, Clint so he can uh, all um, chat with you here for just a moment while I figure out the right. technical problem. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Kevin, very him and his wife, uh, great good friends of mine. Um, Kevin was the president of the Farm Bureau here in town. Great people. Like I said, we're uh, a lot of this stuff is all new to us, so we're getting all the technical stuff done, and you know, we don't see that. Here, do we? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, folks, um, hope you guys are doing well. You know. And you just need to stay positive. You know, you're you, you we're gonna go through the storm, you know. Um keep healthy, stay hydrated. Uh like I said, it's a pain in the butt to get some supplies right now, but you know, we'll get through this. I miss all you guys, you know, being an entertainer. We have a you know, a great job to talk to a lot of the same people every week, have a good time, you know, we enjoy what we do. You can't be a musician unless you love what you, love what you do. That's for sure. And, uh, yeah, it looks a lot better, Eddie. That, that's going to work. And I want to say hi to everybody out there, uh, family, friends, all that good stuff. And, um, like I said, just stay positive and do the best you can because none of us can control any of this. This is something that has uh, never happened uh, in America. And... Um, you know, we just have to get through it day by day and, uh, please help others. And I've told many people, you need some help. You, inst you, uh, instant message me and I'll do all I can, you know, because, uh, I do believe in love thy neighbor as thyself. It's a very important thing. And, um, you know, we're going to do the best we can, you know, because we'll talk about this next year and say, wow, remember when that stuff happened, you know? So. Eddie's back. There we go. I'm back. How's the light? Yeah, no, it looks better. It looks a little better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a text to look for someone in the stream. Michael Harris. Oh, okay. There you are. I know that guy. He's over in Oregon. Okay, Michael. I, I should. I can somebody shout out? Can they hear me? Can I? Can they hear me fine? Just make sure somebody shout out. Say oh, yeah. yeah. Can hear me now. Oh no, we got tons. They say they. They hear you fine. Yeah. Good. Good. That good. that whole that whole time the uh the like I said the board. When we went live, it changed from here oh. to the local microphone. Oh, in the in yeah. the laptop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, Barbara. I'm back in the feed. Okay, that's good. So that means that they've Excellent. figured out that we're not doing anything negative or weird over here. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Let's see here. Oh, we got another one. Uh, Kathy Wollum. Hi, Clint. Many Hello, blessings Kathy. to you. Thank you very much. Well, you have a lot of fans out there. I don't, uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> People actually like you. Look at that. I, I don't feel the love today. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Speaking of love, um, this has been, you know, I mean, granted, we have a lot of stuff going on, but um, it's been a kind of a rough month for country music. We, uh, yeah. we lost Kenny Rogers. Yeah. And then immediately after that, we, uh, Joe Diffie, to coronavirus. I mean, wow, that's like a double whammy. I know if he pokes back in Nashville and said he was playing shows in March and just got sick and then Ugh. passed on Sunday. And Joe Diffie, huge, huge influence on me. There's a, you know, Joe Diffie makes you want to practice more, you know. <laughs> and uh, I know me and Brian Jones are big fans. He did a great tribute uh, song. Mm -hmm. Ships that don't come in this week. It was, it was rough. You know, I, it was very rough for me. 
I've been a big, big fan of his music for a lot of years. And uh, I don't sing a lot of his songs because he's one of them guys, you better do it right. <laughs> you know, there's just some songs you just uh, you don't tackle because it's like, you don't get no better than that, you know. <laughs> still, I still can't believe that. And, and from when with the with the Joe Diffie thing, from the time that they announced it, the time is passing. That was like maybe two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was just rough. And um, you know, uh, Dustin Lee went and he um, played one of his favorite tunes. I can't remember which yeah. one it was that he played. I don't know if I, if I did a song like good I'd probably tear up, you know, and just <laughs> Ray Dale's got Ray Dale says we're not propping you up beside the jukebox. Oh hell, what the not yet. Where's the let well not well, not well maybe later. Yeah. And uh Facebook rules says because we're streaming both on Facebook and YouTube, folks, and Facebook says we're not allowed to drink on the air, you know. But we're not. Mm. This is not vodka, promise. This is not uh any sort of adult beverage. I'm not promising. Nope. No. Well, and this is why, like on YouTube, I don't know if you heard, we had the whole COPA thing for um, dispute with YouTube. And um, they converted us to a kids content channel. Kids now, more content. So we had a flag for literally. So, and of course, our marketing demographic is age 25 to um, 65 is really right. where we market to. And they actually did that and they demonetized. Uh, so for a while there, people couldn't get any notifications that we were, um, had posted a video. So generally if you post a video on YouTube, you get like, you know, if you sub to me, you get an email. Right. Okay. That was gone. So no emails. And, um, they just, you know, in that case, they also disable like super chat donations, all this and creators. This is how creators make a living. So we, right. you know, we do, you know, we broadcast, we do videos, we do all this and they basically stripped all that off. And, Oh, this is not a kid's network folks. No, so, you know, and they still have yet to even acknowledge it, to be honest with you. They, um, yeah. they, I have tweeted them and they say, well, you know, if, if you're not sure you should consult the lawyer. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure we're not a, when we cater to live country music or, you know, right. And, and we don't even, we don't even really no offense to the young kids. We generally don't even market to the 21 to 24 crowd because a lot of them, well, they don't, um, that demographic doesn't seem to really pay attention to who's who and what's what. Right. In in terms of this. Exactly. You know, so. but you, you, you run a family show. There's nothing, you've never posted anything that was off color out of context no. or no, I don't understand but we're, a lot of that. But the kids content thing, that means that they're, if you, if you're focusing on, if you're, if you're a kid's content channel on YouTube, you're focusing towards 13 years and younger. This yeah. is not that channel. No, this it, is not that channel. No. And literally, we we got it a hundred percent fixed just recently. Like we had it fixed, and then it wasn't, and then now it is. Yeah. And and it was just blowing my mind. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, I just you know, I, I really no clue why why they thought that that was appropriate. But hmm. uh, let's see here. How's Eddie been doing? Eddie's hanging in there. Eddie's That's good. Eddie's tired of being in quarantine. <laughs> Who else out there is tired of me? I mean, I've been locked up for longer than most of y'all. So because ever, ever since my last yeah. filming trip, that was the last one that I, I mean, I mean, literally, if it wasn't for my wife and Dustin Howell from Highway 260, um, I mean, I mean, granted, everybody thought I was having a heart attack, but um, uh, I have developed an oxygen depletion issue. Right. So I've kind of had it. For ever since i put on a couple of pounds here yeah. but um it's you know since my last year when i was in denver in november shooting it's it's been getting progressively worse and when i was in prescott i nearly blacked out twice yeah and like one of the times i was actually out in the parking garage behind matt's saloon and i was on my knees not not a, and i hadn't even had a drink but it, you know but if you had walked by you probably would have thought i was drunk or something it was horrible all week i just decided yesterday i'm like i'm eating way too much and i'm not doing anything you know you know i've been um just trying to stay busy building stuff in the garage and trying to keep doing handy things or doing something but <laughs> yeah not having a gym or exercising or working is is probably going to all pay pay uh 
<laughs> we're all going to pay for that in a month or so. Well, I have to say, I actually, um, not that I'm getting a whole lot of exercise, which I should be, I've actually been eating less. And I actually started, well, I actually also started off drinking a lot in the beginning, but actually, that's actually tapered down. Good. I'm actually now good. getting to bed at like eight or nine o'clock, yeah. but I'm up, but I'm up between three and five a.m., which is good because then I'm back at you know, uh, you know, work and everything like that. Well, you know, for me, falling asleep on Friday or Saturday for three a.m. is not normal for me, <laughs> not in any way, <sighs> shape, or form. <laughs> well, I mean, well, let's see what the, the the musician's sleep schedule is normally like. <laughs> 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? Right. No, no, it's at 5 a.m. is actually early for you guys, wouldn't you think, though? Usually we get home about 2 or 3 and I, 4. Usually 3 or 4 is when I finally hang it up. But. Yeah, see, I, I, I've heard it's like eh, maybe between 4 and 6. And actually, I know bartenders that don't even go to bed till like 7 or 8 in the morning. You know as well as I do. When you're, when you're at a show or you're mm-hmm. doing something, you're amped up. You're, you're trying to entertain. You're trying to push that energy out. So you're like amped up, ready to play. Right. da 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 and uh you know you get home and it's like that switch doesn't get turned off you know you're no. just, you're, just, you're just like what do i do now <laughs> you know well i mean well that's one of the reasons why i was having the biggest issues and i was like um i wasn't going to bed for a while there until um maybe 7 seven thirty in the morning so it would i would get so late at night that i was yeah. at that point i'm like well at this point i'm going to stay up and then hang out with my wife before because my wife was deemed essential and so i would hang out with my my wife and um oh dustin's trolling we'll get to him in a second Lindsay, don't don't remove the message i'll i'll talk about it but um uh at that point it's like i I can hang out with my wife and see her and everything like that because you know she she has one of those positions where and i'm telling you folks i mean if you're familiar with the state of arizona or you're here um, I'm, and I'm not going to get into politics, but I'm right now frustrated and all of us should be frustrated with how it's gone so far with, you know, it took how long to get us into, uh, where they started closing down the businesses, but only as of 5 PM today, um, as of five o'clock today, um, are they closing down barbershops and salons and tattoo right. parlors? And, you know, I, I actually ordered a set of hair clippers. This head's getting real short. <laughs> hey, listen, I wear hats most of the time. So I just, this is nice and handsome. Don't need no hair up here, but it's just, it's, but it took them that long to do it. You know, right. I just don't get it. Like I said, there are so many unknowns and so much things, yeah. things that are happening that, you know, 6 million people applied for unemployment last yeah. week. I seen on the news and that's, you know, it's actually 6.23 to yeah. be exact. It was sick. I actually woke up my wife for that one. <laughs> Actually, I wipe yeah, up yeah. all the time, yeah. But, uh, you know, can imagine, let's say there's 120 people that work in that department. They do 1,000 unemployment mm-hmm. uh, applications a week. And then it goes from uh, 1,000 to half a million in three or four days, you know. <sighs> so, you know, it's just nobody's prepared. No, know? no. I mean, yeah. we, we have no idea what's going to happen in, yeah. in the coming months, and it's, it's quite disturbing. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's a little bit. You know, I'm I'm really I'm really surprised at myself, and not bragging. Anything. I'm not I'm not panicked at all. You know, I mean things are happening, but I find myself just like, there's nothing you can do about this. There's nothing you can control. Any of us, not just me, anybody, nobody can control anything, and you just stay focused. You know, and mm-hmm. just and not be. Uh, there's people that are going to panic and people are dying and I have friends that are sick and uh big shout out to anybody in the first responders, nurses, doctors, these people are putting their, their lives on the line. You know, I just, my heart goes out to them because they're, they have families and they're working countless amount of hours. We have, mm-hmm. I have friends in that are RNs, not RNs work in the medical field and man, you know, you're going to work and then, you could be around something that could t- potentially kill you or you take it home to your family. You know, I have people now that are, that are uh, self quarantining that were in dangerous situations around sick people and they're self quarantining. Well, that's what I was, but, um, we were know. getting to with when I got back and they took me to the hospital, right. the, ho- the, the folks at the hospital 
And of course, my wife doesn't agree because I now have these breathing issues and basically my oxygen just drops right. and then I've had tight chest and everything, but um, every test came out good. So I, I right. have no idea, but they gave me a bunch of steroids, but I specifically was told I had to go and self quarantine and I hate it. You know, I went and shot that show over at Joel Mays's and I was like, yeah, yeah. I didn't go near anybody. I accidentally shook, right. shook someone's hand and I ran away. My wife had to come out like I'm lathering and hand sanitizer. I'm like, you got to. Cause they, it'll, you know, some of us will kill us, yeah. you know? And, and like I said, I'm a thinker, not just those people. How about people that are working at, at circle K's, mm -hmm. UT's that are around people every day and we're doing social distancing, but it's just, my heart goes out to, to musicians, bartenders, oh, yeah. waitresses, you know, we all live, you know, pretty much paycheck to paycheck. You know, they were around a lot of people, yeah. you know, I mean, waitresses, I mean, they, you know, and just like us, we're around thousands of people a week. You know, but right now, there we're we're counting on these people in the medical industry and and people, police officers, firefighters, that will help these people and putting their lives on the line. I, my heart goes out to them. I, oh yeah! Please, thank you very much. For I mean, they, your service. They, those are the heroes, right? They're right there, first you know, responders, yeah. healthcare workers, all of them. I mean, like I said, you know, uh, entertainment is a, a thing we do but there's people out there that do many things above and beyond the call yeah. of duty you know what i mean so any more questions out there and uh well we got YouTube some comments yeah uh let's see here dustin howell says eddie how about the ramp at dylan stage well see you're making fun of me but i don't think it's very funny because i was like why is this happening to me so i carried literally you know i don't know a couple things up out of his truck for uh, Dustin and don't get me started as to why he needed help. And it's nothing wrong with Dustin, trust me. But anyway, um, that's just people that don't help. If you're in a band, help your bandmates. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, if anyone like if, 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 if some of you are new here, I've been in and around music since I was about 16. So, and I actually was a musician briefly and I ended up here you know, being the PR broadcaster guy, but help your mates. It's so telling you. You were a musician. I feel sorry for you. I was a, <laughs> I was a singer for a few years in a, I thought you knew this. I did. I'm just, oh, okay. yeah, I was a Johnny cash impersonator and we did other, you know, cool vintage guys and everything, but that was, I, I mean, uh, apparently that's my go-to. Have I, I, no, I haven't sang with your band. Have I? Not yet. No, not You're yet. always filming us. Yeah, <laughs> not as much anymore. Be so. I mean, it's it's funny because my copycat started filming it, and the thing is, is that the live feeds are okay, but um, to just film constantly and inundate your um your feeds with the footage doesn't do as much as you think it does. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, we shoot when we do shoot, we only shoot for like you know three to five minutes, unless it's a venue that we almost never get to. Then we'll go a little bit longer. So then I save that live footage and I use it as B roll later, but. Anyway, so Dustin's talking about the ramp at Dillon's. So there's at Dillon's Western Trails Ranch um, out in Morristown, Arizona, there is a ramp going up the back um, of the stage so the band can load in. Carried a couple of items with me, and I thought I was going to die. And he was laughing at me, and I honestly was like, I didn't know what was going on because I, you know, I, I used to be like, Back in back in my early twenties, I mean, granted, I'm forty now, but I used to be a competitive weightlifter, and I'm out of shape. But I didn't think I was that out of shape. So that's right. again leading up to when we found out about the health problem. So thanks, Dustin, for poking fun. Oh, Barbara, uh, she subbed on Patreon. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Thank I, you. I really, 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 it means a lot. Um, most of the because we country road provides a lot of services and um, most of what's to like the music scene and the venues the bands and everything and when this started um you know there went most of our income so right now we're actually relying on patreon to uh basically feed my family <laughs> so for yeah. if anybody if anybody wants to would like to if they like what they see here or they follow us um you can join for as little as a dollar a month but uh, the different tiers give all you know different stuff from like sweet free swag to behind the scenes footage to um, uh, private live streams with the group. So let's just say um, this one is a public one, but periodically we will do a live stream just with Patreon members. We haven't done one in a while, but we do have one coming up. Uh, Clint is actually a Patreon member. As yes, well. I'm 
proud patron member. Thank That's you, right. sir. He's actually, uh, so is Dustin Howell. Uh, they're actually on the sponsor tier, which really, really, you know, helps us out a lot. Uh, let's yeah. See here. Uh, let's see. Oh, Lisa says that Seattle is on lockdown until May 4th. Yeah, yeah that's, that's they're gonna, a, they're gonna yeah. start extending those. Yeah, yeah. Well, the ones like I heard so far have been that they're extending to yeah. May fifteenth minimum. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Arizona coming back till no. after May either. You know, it's not being negative. It's just hey, until they get a uh, handle on this, I don't see anything coming back. Well, and they have these things that right, they're doing with the unemployment for contractors, right? Like us. Um, I'm not even messing with it because I, I already put a thing into it. And it's there's so there's actually a whole ton of red tape, and I'm like, you know what? I'll just try and I'll muddle my way through versus dealing with this. But any if, but if any of you out there are self um, employed or anything, you can file for self employment. Supposedly they're going to give you um, another right. six hundred. Um, right now they're kicking it back. I know. Yeah, they're a few of us have applied for it, and it, the computers are kicking it back because we're self employed. Which in real in real terms they they w we wouldn't we wouldn't so they haven't caught up with the computer and they're spitting the letters out but they well, say they're gonna get that under control. My experience is actually even worse. I got three letters in the mail today. One was a, a wage statement. The other one was uh, and these all these questions I answered online. It, they had a questionnaire about why I'm not at my old W two job, which I already told them. And you know, and actually, it's a pretty good explanation. But I'm not there. So, but the, the way I was going in is because I'm self-employed contractor. Right. So the third letter was another questionnaire about being a contractor. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, so what is it guys? Cause one letter looks like you're approved. One letter is questioning you about being employed over here. And then one letter is just about being a contractor. Right. I don't think they have it together at all. So, you know, and then, then they're doing the SBA thing. Yeah. And, the SBA thing. Well, I'm following that in some groups. Nobody's yeah. gotten squat. No, because it's just overwhelmed. There's, you know, I know somebody was on the on hold for four hours uh, just with unemployment, and they never got through. You know, um, everything is just a, a mess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a mess. And I'm not blaming anybody. Come on, I mean, these people are overwhelmed just like we are. We're, with overwhelmed with they're overwhelmed with all these applications, and uh -huh. you know. I, it's it's it's, it's it's gonna be well it's just like you said i mean it's unprecedented yeah we the world i don't think i mean and no. the spanish flu 19 was it 1918 yeah we didn't have the population that we do no. now either i mean so now yeah. we're post baby boom here we are by the way there'll be another boom of babies and divorces in a year or so, so i'm sure but holy i mean i don't think any government and call me crazy i don't think any government in this country or country in this world was really prepared for this at all i don't so it's interesting to see how this is going to pan out and you know how could you you know i mean what what are you going to prepare i mean Thank we, you, could Barbara. Have, we could have had more ventilators but like i said yeah nobody saw this coming like like it's happened you well know? and i and the thing is is like you know and i see everybody everybody's blaming somebody and each other listen folks there is no way that anybody could have seen is, I mean, we, we, for those of you, I mean, I was paying attention to it. So, I mean, it started creeping out. It's, you know, it's ugly head in late December and then going into January. Right. So I was aware of it. I don't know how many people were aware of it then, but nobody would have ever thought like turn into this. It would turn into this. And the thing is, is like when they were locking down Wuhan, China, it's like they actually gave them so much notice that people were leaving. Five million people left Wuhan. Wow. Via air. Yeah. Right before the lockdown, it was like either 10 o'clock or midnight, their time. Yeah. Five million people, though, went all over the globe, and they let them out. And Just, a big shout out to uh, pilots and stewardesses. Mm -hmm. They've been locked in these tubes since all this came out. So you Are know, they still like, in quarantine and everything? A lot of them? I think, yeah. I think that's coming. I think the airlines are going to shut down. I don't know for sure. But like I said, you're locked in the tube, and that that air is being circulated in, in a plane. So, you yeah. know, anybody that's still doing that <sighs> shout out to you folks too. You know, uh, Barbara says that she hopes our hot summers will defeat the virus. You know, I've been hearing a lot on that topic. Um, and honestly, you, you see, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news. Yeah, I have been. There's a lot of mixed um, opinion from the, you know, experts and scientists on whether or not that's actually going to be a thing right. because I mean, in climates with warmer temperatures, like, you know, I, I believe like even South Africa has got cases and they're, right. 
they're pretty warm from what I understand. I, I mean, I'm not an yeah. expert, but you know, there's cases in South America, uh, Mexico, which is, you know, a somewhat warmer climate, um, is riddled with cases now. So, wow. I mean, the entire Northern c continent is just, it's a mess. The only thing that I can see, like we've lived in Arizona is you see a lot less people with flu in the summertime. But I think the dry heat uh -huh. can help that. Uh, it's like if you coughed outside, I think the dry heat, I'm not, in any way, shape, or form. Oh, no, I did expert. hear this. Yeah. You know, the dry heat can burn it off. Not sure. Not saying it does. But I, I just noticed that being in public for the last many, well, many years, that the it, flu it goes way down, way down when it gets really hot out. Well, well, what it is is with the, the dry heat specifically, I know what you're saying. So let's just say you cough and that germ, generally humidity can hold those germs, I right. guess. Here, you know, in the dry heat, it'll just go right to the ground. Basically, if you've ever been in Arizona in 120 degree weather outside, none of us can live in that. <laughs> well, and then see, that's the thing too, because that's when the ones that believe it's going to die down, what they're saying is that okay, so like say for example, in the Southwest, it'll die down in the um, the summer, but then we're going to have another wave in the fall. So, yeah, you know, knows. and again, we're not experts. We're just going off of what we saw in the news. Reading and hearing, yeah. A lot of reading. Oh, Lisa says, going back to the SBA, you know, 85,000 small business applies for $2.2 .2 billion in grants. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to work, Lisa. Um, I literally, um, I have the pre-application in for my business. I'm not doing the unemployment thing. Um, I am literally just requesting the $10,000 that they claim would be forgiven. And that should get us by until things pick up. But, you yeah. know, who knows? And uh, Barbara says to wear a mask. Barbara, I have an N95 that I've been wearing around the house, and that's it. And I have a dust mask that literally I have reserved for my wife. And my wife went to Costco and fries today without the darn mask, and I, I blame myself. But she she won't wear it. She's not wiping down anything like unless I get on top of everything and yeah. say you have to do it. So I hope we don't get anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions again, Barbara? Thank you uh, so much for. Uh, subscribing to us on patreon uh we really appreciate it heck in these days my family appreciates it you know and it, and, it, and the thing is is i i've been at this for oh, um, over three years yeah and i i was it, it it took a like a year's worth of preparing and planning to the point where of course i went full time earlier than expected but to to me, like in the support of my wife and my children and my family, to do this full time was a dream. Um, yeah. I love Country Road Entertainment. I love everything about it. I love supporting live music. I love, well, I just love shooting. So I'm like, well, I love live music. So that's you know that's been my target ever since. So you know, when you help us, you're helping them. Yeah, you know, um, and those of us, or those of you watching on uh, Facebook. Be sure to go to um, our page or our group, Live Country Music in Arizona. But on Country Road Entertainment, there too. There is a virtual tip jar, and it has a spreadsheet attached to it on um, Google Drive of every musician we've gotten so far um, um, in the Southwest that we you know have the information for. So if you find one of your favorite bands on there, you can actually send them a virtual tip. Um, Again, a, a lot of these folks, you know, they're full time and they're hurting, they're scared, they're trying to feed their families just like I am. Yeah. Um, and they're all being very creative and finding ways to, you know, stream live concerts and whatever they can just to, to keep entertaining you and, you yeah. know, and me. So if, you know, if you want, you know, look for that list and you go, oh, well, Cassie Thompson, I love Cassie Thompson or, you know, Brittany Burns, Arizona Blacktop, love her. Brian Childers, Western Fusion, love him. Yeah. Then throw him a couple bucks, you know, because yeah. that goes to help feed their families. You know, it really does. I mean, and we're not trying to be e-beggars. We're no. all just entertainers and creators, and we're, we're here to just entertain you guys. We do this for you. We love it. Exactly. We do it because we love it, but we love entertaining you. So... Hey, I, I want to hear... What were you going to say? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh, I... So... I have to bring up your video that you did the other day because I'm telling you. So <laughs> if anybody um, uh, actually, Lindsay, can you could you take a second and uh, can you grab the link to Clint's video and uh, post post that in the uh, both the YouTube and the Facebook chat for me? Um, so 
everybody's been doing these live music uh, streams <laughs> and, you know, trying to do, hey, virtual shows for, for the fans and everything. And so what Clint did, and I'm actually going to start looking more at the camera instead of myself. So what Clint did was... <laughs> Uh, he, he, why don't you just <laughs> it was my cousin buck hoss he buck wants hoss. he wants to be a superstar and he's doing his best all right <laughs> so and the sponsors were my favorite right the right from the get-go he should have a youtube channel that he like he has one but he's you that should be on youtube there is he, a there is another buck hoss show coming soon he told me just the other day that he got such a good response and all he wanted to do was make people laugh in a in a in a horrible situation, and he did it. I I was laughing the whole time, you know, when he was doing that. <laughs> well, oh, sorry to see you go, Barbara. I understand. I know uh, when they need mods over there. Um, you need to put that on YouTube. That all right? I, I that see that see that kind of kind. If you actually did that, even when if things ever go back to normal, if you did one of those a week, you would be self promoting. With that, and, and the thing is, is that's not a bad thing. And Buck Hoss is very, he has got a ton of ideas for that. Trust me, he's working, been working on that. He just did it off the cuff in his garage, and uh, and uh, it's on my Facebook page, so you can check out Buck, the Buck Hoss Show, the first, the first airing of the Buck Hoss Show. I don't think that she's going to grab it. I'm going to actually drop the link here. I don't know where Lindsay went. Maybe she got it. I think he changed the name. He was going to call it Arizona E-Haw, but he doesn't want any copyright thing. So he's, now he's called the Buck Haw Show. That's funny. And uh, so, yeah, check out the Buck Haw Show. So that's, is that's on, is it on Marble Heart or your page? It's on my page, Clint Williams. All right, let me find. Um, oh, so you, actually, I don't know if I can actually put a link to that because you didn't do it on YouTube, did you? No, but uh, you can show me. Well, we'll show Buck how to do it. Let me see here. If we go down. Yeah. Actually, I can go to. There it is. Show video URL. There, there we go. <laughs> this, this, folks, this is this is entertainment at its best. I found it, Lindsay. We're cool. Yeah. So you all should be able to catch this feed. <laughs> that so, and I'm not putting down any of the musicians for doing the live music shows or yeah. anything like. I mean, I did one. We did one with VX3. It was great. Oh, that was excellent. Yeah, I was so jealous. Those guys have such a big budget. Compared hey, to me. hey, not not to get off topic, but sure. VX3, uh, good friends of mine, Chris Roos, um, a big sound company. They went from, let's just say, a ton of money out there in corporates and sound lighting to zero, mm-hmm. rather than being sitting there doing nothing. Let's do some live feeds. We're just sitting here with all this equipment. Let's invite some bands in here. Mogi on us, uh, the ZZ Top, uh, Dwayne Moore did a thing. It was awesome. So they set up all this million dollars worth of equipment and did this video thing, and it's great. You know, and they're doing as long as they can. I know they've been practicing social distancing. Last night with Mogi on, they put tape on the floors and kept the guys apart. There was only less than 10 of us, and the whole feed is not full of people. It's a wow. big warehouse, big open door. Everybody's wearing masks, gloves just to do something positive because they have no work, you know? And like I said, big shout out to Chris Roos and VX3 doing an amazing job here in town, doing it all for free, you know, doing what they can. Like I said, they, they got some tips and we donated our tips that we got that night to VX3. We didn't take any of the tips because all those guys need to get paid. And, you know, those so, videos, those guys fun. are, I, I mean, I'm super impressed. I'm actually going to, see um and if 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 they ever see this guys i'm gonna be getting a holy as soon because i'd like to come out and rent your space to do some of my uh, demo videos with my bands we'll pay <laughs> obviously and now granted all of my demos that i'm set up for don't get any guy ideas guys you cannot <laughs> steal my business but i would totally come out and rent out that space and i'm pretty sure that's the option right i can rent out their space i don't know bro but i'm telling you there is equipment stacked to make all that happen i had such a big respect for tv and people that do stuff live because to, oh, to make all that happen the there was racks of video yeah. and audio the audio wasn't bad they had racks to stream it's just totally i was like blown well, they, away they, how much equipment you need to make that happen you know well, they, they pulled out all the big guns for that i know they yeah. did i could tell i i um i i need to actually send it man i wish uh he uh, was watching my buddy Dan out in California, the one I was talking about earlier. Right. And, um, you know, because he deals with that stuff for a living. Um, yeah. But, you know, but the thing is, is that I'm pretty sure you can book them. But for all that equipment, generally what they do, and this is how the industry works, 
they charge you. They like to, so they have to, they, they charge you for labor and then they rent the equipment to you. That's right. how it's, I actually I haven't done that ever, but. Um, and these guys you know. never did much of the live stuff and those guys are so good. Oh, they nailed they it. They figured it they out. Awesome. I'm doing, I'm saying they don't really do, they do video and audio and corporates and, and live music all over the United States, but they were new to the, the streaming and how that worked and linking up and they figured it out. I'm telling you, it was mind boggling. I was sitting there trying to figure out how to get the links to log up where we could share it. And it was just in, when people on the outside look at this, they go, Oh, that just works. No, it is very complicated. And they were streaming at 4k. I mean, it was high end streaming and, uh, it was amazing. I, I really learned a lot and got a big respect for people that do from the news to Saturday night live. I mean, that's a lot. It's, it's chaos, you know, and I, I've heard that before watching documentaries on live TV and Saturday night live. And that it's just chaos getting all that to work and, you know, Plus, and then they had, they had commercials, you know, so there's all the stuff oh, yeah. going on live. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I was really impressed and I was, I had like, there was times cause I, 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 I mean, I have a lot of equipment here, folks. I really do, but mm -hmm. nothing like that. So I had all kinds of like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you kind of like when Dustin Howell shows up, thank you. Dustin Howell shows up with his Dodge 2500. I'm not, I'm I'm a Ford guy, but I'm not against Dodges or Chevys if if it's in my budget and it's got a great engine I'm in. But you know, I have an F one fifty and I actually would prefer to have an F two fifty or a twenty five hundred or something. And it, like yesterday I, I, I saw Dustin uh, was it yesterday or the day before, I think it was the day before, and it, I could hear him pull up with that diesel engine and I'm like, oh so I have truck envy, right? So here I'm watching this feed with Clint <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm watching it on the TV behind us actually. And I'm just having, you know, camera envy and switch your hardware envy. And, you know, because I know what goes into this stuff, but the budget is huge. You know, do, do you know what Buck Haas uses? What is, I, I'm afraid to ask, what does Buck Haas use? An iPad and a mounted to a mic stand. That's all he's got. <laughs> and he uploads it, he uploads it to Facebook. Well, honestly, you know, with, some, <laughs> with the upcoming coming car conscious series that I'm going to do, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it off of. Um, you know, from the, the band soundboard directly into an iPad and then split off to two phones. Right. Or if I'm actually going to do it board to board and that, and we'll right, talk right. about that after this, but yeah. I really don't know what I'm going to do, but you, but this, the thing is, is if you do it right, I mean, I don't know Were you mic'd for that or did you not mic? For no, that? Buck oh. just, Buck just uses the microphone in the iPad. Mm. He is low <laughs> tech. Let me just tell you on his end. Buck is so funny. By the way, do you, um, Joseph, I've had him on the screen. I'm sorry, Joseph Gilm. He says, good music. Do you know who he is? I uh, probably do. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I forget names. I'm terrible. Everybody knows me as I forget people's names, but I'm well, we, so many people I know by face, but not by name. Well, we totally appreciate everybody. Like, everybody. You know, we appreciate everybody in general, but for those of you watching today, um, and we'll go a little bit longer, probably not too much longer. Um, we talked about doing an hour. Uh, but you get, the one thing you got to know about Clint and I is once him and I get going, it just it, like even in text. Oh my God, we can just, <laughs> and then the gifts and the memes pop up. The memes, the, oh, memes, yes, the, oh, memes. Yes, the memes, laughter is the best medicine. I'm telling you. Well, and it, you know, when I said you saw my video the other day where, um, um, uh, I was talking about being in quarantine and I was banned from Facebook temporarily. And, um, you know, I said, you know, positivity is like the best thing right now turn off the news um do right. something else listen and i always tell people listen to music you know yeah you know and i even you know and i'll tell you turn on youtube watch a youtube video of your favorite band or something turn all that crap off because the, the reality of it you, you know, got to get away from it you, you, you got to get away from it you and, and, well the the thing is is the, all it does is subconsciously cost you more anxiety Exactly. And it will. There's nothing we can do to control this nothing. except for stay home and yeah. stay healthy. We can control that. You know, talking about that. Uh, people know the band Ray Riondo is our bass player oh, and yeah. he is the underground comedy in the band that Ray has made me laugh and mess up a many a song. He's a people watcher and we, we enjoy our crowds and uh, he is the definitely the, comic relief in the band and every band has one usually I've, uh -huh. I've been a few bands and, and there's always one guy that just makes you laugh 
And I'm going to tell you, many days I get up on that stage or had a bad day and he makes me laugh and it all goes away. You know, I just, if I laugh, if I'm having a bad, if I go watch some comedy or, or get a meme and laugh, I just, it just makes the day go by so much better oh, and the night, you know. And that's the key. I mean, it, you know, and then get outside, have a little sun. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, you know, avoid the places they're telling you to avoid. I don't know. I yeah. Mean, it's the best thing I can, all can do. And F COVID-19, we're going to beat it. Uh, that's right. I, I want to say, because this is a, I'm going to give a shout out to Grunt Style. They actually came up with this shirt and I saw it be in there. It's like one of the very few businesses that I, I will actually allow to send me spam mail. And when this came in, I'm like, hell yeah. You got to get it. Uh, you you know. got to get it. You got to get you know. it. And if, you know, and I want to just sound like that all American patriot going, if any country can beat this, it's America. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody's actually going to win this one. <laughs> I really, I, I, I really, we shouldn't even laugh and feel bad. There is just so much, so many people. Did you, okay. Did you see this video about this bus driver in Detroit the other day? No, tell me. Oh my God. Okay. So a few weeks ago, I think when Barbara went, she uh, took off to go mod for um, a gender free TV, but we saw the the video on there and, and I was thinking it was in real time. Okay. Right. So evidently, okay. So here's what happened. This is going to mess you up for the day. So he's a public service worker. Mm -hmm. He's a bus driver for the city of Detroit. And he um, has been having these issues with, um, you know, the people getting on there and they're just coughing, not covering their mouth, sneezing, not covering. Right. And he did a video from his phone, you know, where he just kind of comes up and he's like, you know, comes off the bus, he's talking to it. And he just rants for 10, 12 minutes on this video about the fact that nobody gives an F. They get on this bus, they stand in there, and they're coughing, not covering their mouths, like just completely unsanitary. He's like, what's wrong with you people, right? I get it. So this was, you know, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. So his video was posted evidently on, I guess, Facebook. They did a rant. Here's a sad thing. He's dead. He ended up dying of coronavirus. Wow. I literally, so I was moderating for um, Steve. You know, I did see that this yeah. morning. That yeah, that, okay, yeah. He was ranting about that. Yeah, I was thinking this last yeah, he's week. Dead. Yeah, I, mean, I was thinking this last week. They're telling us to stay home, and there's a park by my house, and there was like 200 people there. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a uh, conspiracy theorist or anything, but this is real. This is not telling you to stay home like mommy or daddy. This is stay home. Yeah. You know, have you, have you seen that? What's that actor did that rant about your kids? Stay your, have you seen that? No, I haven't. I got to send it to you. He rants about okay. people. This is not a joke. Keep your freaking kids at home. He did use, they used a few explicitives, but it was funny because he was right. He was like, none of this. Who well, cares? A lot of about these kids think it's like, like, you know, I had a talk with my daughter the other day and, uh, you know, and I'm like, I want to, you know, I'm kind of getting the impression that she thinks that this is vacation. Like this is not, this is not, vacation. This is not a vacation. And actually I told her, I said, if anything, I'm like, you know, yeah, I want you to do more around the house, but I want you to think when you're around the house sure. about the people out there that have to go to work like your mother and the people that are getting that, that are actually dying. This is far from a vacation. This is a catastrophe, right. you know, like I said, I know people that got it. I haven't known anybody that's passed away yet, but I know people that got it. A friend of mine in Nashville has it. And he, he told me that he is sleeping 16 hours a day. He's on the lockdown in his house. Him and his wife got it. And he it is knocking him. And he's a go-getter. He's always out there playing, doing shows. And uh, he's uh, knocked him 16 hour a day sleeping. You get up, he says, all you want to do is go back to sleep. And it's just horrible. You know, it's just, this is, and I guess that, that kind of hit home for me when I heard about that 10 days ago. This is not a joke. I know somebody that actually has this. And it's not, it's not good. You know, it's not no. good. No, it's not. Actually, um, there's a couple of people here, I hate to say it, that I know in Chandler that have it. Yeah. And they're in quarantine. And they, how are they doing? Have you heard how they're doing? Um, actually, I've heard that they're both are doing fine. That's good. That's okay. good. That, that's, that's the relief. But, um, you know, I... <laughs> just about lost my crap when I heard, you know, was, yeah. And then I was, you know, and they were, they were cool enough that they were like, Hey, you know, these are the places I hang out. We're just letting everyone know that hangs out these places because this is where I was. Right. And I'm not going to name the venues, no, but, um, you know, he, he d does have it. And, but they, and the places, you know, I mean, for, I, we haven't hung out at the places he's talking about in ages where, um, 
my wife and I are to the point where when we go to do and shoot anything or work, we go to certain places or it's scheduled. And if we're going to hang out, we go to two places and that's it. Um, life with kids, you know what I mean? I got a but, teenager that's yeah. locked. Is, is, his mom uh, asked me to keep him home and I said, you're right. And he's been on lockdown and he, he's going stir crazy. We do things. We've been uh, building stuff in the garage. And uh, now, how old's your boy again? 13. 13. That's 13, right. Yeah. But, you know, I can, you know, people like people with four or five kids locked oh. up in their house. You know, we love our kids, but like I said, you know, especially teenagers, you know. I don't know. Like, I mean, um, I, I mean, I only, I have two children. They're, I mean, they're my stepchildren, but they're my kids. I'm yeah. sorry. And, yeah. and if, and if, and if they're, if he's, if their father sees this, I don't care, man. They're, they're mine. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're really, really good kids. Yeah. And I miss them like right now because they're not home right today. But um, I have to agree. There's moments where it's like, you know, I, you have to give them because everything's do, being done remotely. So right. they're getting their schoolwork and you got to give them something constructive. Right. For you. And they, you know, you know, they don't want to do it. And it's like, I, guys, I know. So my son too. testing my patience here. Come on. You, you know, know, cause we all, we all communicate with the schools through our phones now. Yeah. Hey, he needs to get his work done. Okay. And you translate that. You know. Actually, the biggest problem I have with my stepson is he does it too darn quick. And then he's looking around, and I think he's not doing it. And then I found out that he does. So then he wants to go take a nap. I'm like, no, you can't sleep all day. So I'm like, yeah, I said, your, your Mima, which is her grandmother, uh, you know, that's her mother's mother. Mima sent you over this this virtual uh, field trip stuff. Go do that. Okay. And then I come through, and he's snoring again on the couch. I'm like, seriously. And I'm in, and I'm in the <laughs> office scrounging up content and trying to find a way to make a buck for the day so I can feed them dinner. I was <laughs> thinking this. This year, my like my son, the school does an app thing, and he, he, he does he, he does anything wrong. They send me a text. We were in school. Thank God they didn't have apps for school kids when I went to school. Really? Because you know they they only sent you all the letters when uh, you know you did something really bad. Uh -huh. But with schools now, <laughs> excuse me. Hey, uh, wrong, wrong pipe. That, that sounds like a dry cough. Do I need no? To it's not a dry cough. I, I will get drink some medicine. water that we went down the wrong pipe. Sorry, <laughs> but anyway, it, it's got to. Oh man, you can't get away with nothing anymore being a kid, you know. No, it, no well, no. Um, it, yeah, well, the, there's trust me, any any issues I've had, like with involving my daughter, my daughter goes to Hamilton High School, you know, and one of my uh, best friends, uh, shout out to Larry Whitmar. What's up? And uh, he, uh, he's actually um, a teacher there, science teacher, mm -hmm. teaches advanced science, and then he's also like a, what I call the redneck candy man. He is like awesome. The guy can make anything happen. Right. But um, he's fine, but he's, but there's these other teachers there uh, that are like literally I know how like both of my kids are really smart we all say that about our kids sure but but their grades actually like I don't have to really worry about that they come home like we'll, we'll get scared that that this d-bag teacher is going to do this or do that and he, he, then he gives her like a d on something and suddenly he, she gets an a in her finals and she gets straight a's but like I'm like to the point right now with some of these teachers because their assignments are so ridiculous that if I could find them, <laughs> I yeah. would, because you literally, how do I explain it? The assignments are so stupid, the kids aren't learning anything. And half of the kids, I hate to say it, the half the kids shouldn't even pass this year. And, and I know that from teachers. And this situation is actually making it worse. So I, I give the teachers some credit, but there's also teachers like with my, check this out, with my son's nine years old. They're not, so he's had homework. We don't even have a way to turn it in. So s suddenly now next I, uh, Thursday, we're supposed to have conference yeah. calls with them individually. I'm like, how are we supposed? How are you grading these kids? Well, I, got, I know through my with my son, they're doing it on Google Classroom, and it's it's just pretty much like the test you take. You choose the answer, you read, take the test. I mean, it's pretty. I mean, for what they can do, uh, like I said, it's new for the teachers. I know my son's teachers have been awesome. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, the assignments are not very long. It's just trying to get through the basics. It's uh -huh. gonna, and a friend of mine, you know, his uh, their son's going in the military uh, when he graduates. 
And now that's up in the air. When is he going to graduate? So nobody knows, you know, so that's, that's another big, a big shout out to the teachers, you know, what do you do? It's like, uh, okay. They've been incorporating computers into schools for years, but this is like, how do I teach? What, what do I, you know, so they, they, I know they were scrambling to do, well, how can I do this at home? You know? So we're trying to figure that out. I know it's tough. Yeah, uh, it just I hope we get through it, you know, sooner than yeah. later. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I everybody I think I mean teachers and everything, I think everyone's kinda, you know, stressed to the max, you know. Right. And I'm sure anybody who's been watching today are just ready to I, I think a lot of people want to just get to the bar, have a drink and watch a band. There you go. You know. I mean, Amen I honestly that. can't wait. Oh, what's this? Uh Kevin Rogers. Grilling ribs gotta run. See you back soon. By the way, love the live show the other day. Hey, uh thank you, Kevin. Kevin. Thanks for, for saying that. And yeah, his show is pretty hysterical and you can't just put grilling ribs and then run, dude. Are, are, is it, are you sharing? Can we have contact list delivery? Well, Kevin is a farmer, so I'll guarantee you they'll be good. So oh, I, I love ribs. My, my kids love mine, but I, I gotta get a smoker. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I, we've been at this for almost an hour and a half now. Um, if anyone has any, um, uh, more questions for, uh, Clint or for myself, um, we're going to start wrapping things up. You can follow Clint on Facebook at yep. the, uh, was it Marble Heart or Marble Heart Band? On Marble Heart. It's just Marble just Heart. Marble Heart. And then MarbleHeartBand.com. Uh, like I said, we don't know when the shows will come back. Everybody will be fully aware of that, you know. And like, I want to do a quick shout out to Eddie, Country Road Entertainment, doing a fabulous job here in town, promoting constantly 24 hours a day. And uh, him and his wife do amazing jobs here in town. And uh, please support live music when you can, when we get back to that. Um, and I want to say something, Eddie, too, not to be off the cuff or rude, but just the hoarding is stupid. There, I, I know truck drivers. There is no shortage of toilet paper. He's like, There's no shortage of food. You know, there is older people out there, including my mother, you know, they, they can't run and grab toilet paper. And I just, I just, please be good to your fellow human beings out there and understand there are no shortages. And uh, I know I've said some things on Facebook. We have, you know, we have 11 rolls in this house. So if that's hoarding, there you go. Then <laughs> you're not, I think I have 10, you know, but you that's really? normal. We keep around, but I did want to say to everybody out there, just please be a good human being and understand there is no shortages and just, just be good to each other. It's very, very important to me. It's very important. To a lot of people I know don't panic, keep calm. We are not, like I said, we're not in a, uh, uh, a situation where those things are going to go away. So no, this, I mean, yeah, yeah, the more that you buy what you need, exactly. the grocery stores are never, they're not going to close Buy what you need. Don't do anymore. We like we just were able to get our first bit of ramen noodles for the first time in a month. Um, yeah. We Carly was at Costco before they opened, still couldn't get toilet paper. Miraculously, she got it. Well, miraculously, because we've been over the past three weeks, we've been to Costco three times, and that's where we get my dog's food. Food, yep. Miraculously, they had a few bags, so she was able to. She bought one bag. That's right. And then, you know, I mean, and then a box of treats for him. But the last few times we've been there, folks, there has been zero cat food, zero dog food. Buy what you need. And please, is, please. And the, the hardest thing is, and my father's a truck driver. I used uh, to work in retail, so I understand all that. Yeah, yeah. Friends, and we have a lot of fans in the trucking industry, yeah. and they're like, you know, they, they, they pass that law. They can drive 16 hours a day yeah. instead of 12. Yeah. And these guys are just, just stop. You know, just please just it's you're going to be fine. Trust me. <laughs> well, big shout out to like Dustin, Dustin, Howell. he's a, um, um, the head of the teamsters for UPS. Yeah. Those boys are they're They're working <laughs> around the clock. Yeah. And you know, UPS is big too. Every, every truck driver is important, but I want to give it, you know, a shout out to UPS right now as well, but they are trying to bring everything to us but they can't bring it fast enough. Yeah. So when you buy too much, people can't get what they need. So stop yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, what's this here? Um, oh, Kevin. All right. Well, let's, let's make it a like thing as we're wrapping up. He's on, he's doing it on the trigger. Hey, Kevin, I'm jealous. Uh, 
if you um i don't know if you follow country road or not go ahead and follow it send me uh send me some pics uh my wife knows uh full well that i want to trigger for uh father's day or birthday or something so i want to make that happen big shout out kevin and his wife are great people great people um kathy willem uh, have you thought about doing some live feed in the future when this is over for some people who just can't get out to, to live shows so i don't know if that question is directed at clint or myself but we can both answer go ahead clint you know like i said i'm not we, we marble heart is practicing social distancing like we thought about doing some things but you know it's just it's 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 not a good situation and I, and I want to do some more life stuff, but we are practicing social distancing and yes, we, we will do maybe do some stuff in the future as far as do it streaming, you know, you know, like I, I said, we're not as a band, we're not, we decided we're not going to do that. You know, we have one band member that's going through some health issues and he doesn't need any contact with anybody. He got him staying at home. Everybody's fine. Like I said, he, he, his health issues are fine and, and he'll be fine. And, uh, just just keeping everybody healthy is the most important everybody's good in our band uh my family's doing good nobody in my family's sick and uh, everything's good and uh, i i haven't heard of any musicians that caught up just one uh big press for jd hogue he's a guitar player you know and he he got it but he's doing better you know so it's only I, one musician i, I hadn't know heard, in i hadn't heard that he's here yeah jd, JD hogue, oh, great no, guitar no. player no i know jd what who's he with JD plays for a lot of people. I'm not sure who okay. he's been with. A uh, good friend of mine, uh, JD's a great human being, and uh, but he got it. So he's kind of like an Ethan Newman that floats a lot. Yeah, because Ethan, Ethan, you could just you could be at one venue watching a show, and then JD Hogue the played for he pops up. I mean, I played with JD Hogue. He's, okay. he's played there, but he's been he, he was a mainstay in this town for many years. But he's doing better, and like I said, so everybody stay healthy and and clean, and make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> That's always a plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wash your hands. Like you can see in my, uh, in our last, uh, 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 offline video, we uploaded and we showed it like a morning routine that I go through. And one of yeah. which is right before I sit down to work in the studio, I sanitize. Yeah. Um, and Kathy, from my angle, uh, we've had such positive feedback with our uh, live stream so far that, uh, we are actually going to, uh, continue these whether they're not whether or not they're going to actually be on uh, this specific channel or not we haven't decided um, but in the for the indefinite future we're going to be doing probably less offline videos and more online videos just because of the fact that there's um, it's hard for me to get come up with content from my house yeah so um, and the cool thing about um, our uh, set up here is that I can actually invite guests virtually. And like I said, originally Clint was actually, I thought he was going to become a virtual guest, but he showed up anyhow. So, yeah. and that's, and that's cool though. I mean, Clint's family, um, I've known Clint now for yeah. well over three years and, um, we but, always have a good time. But like I said, we were practicing social distancing here. We didn't yeah. shake hands. We're no. like I said, we're, we're being very cautious. We're both healthy right now. We're being very cautious, you yeah. know? And uh, it the rumor is true. Buck Haas said he would do a show here, so we might be good doing Outstanding. that. Outstanding. Let's let's have that come up very very soon. <laughs> okay. So, all right, folks, we're going to wrap it up uh, across Thank the you. screen right now. We have uh, uh, Marble Hearts website and how you can find them on Facebook as well. So be sure to check them out. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thanks for sticking with us. And be sure to, uh, if you're new here, be sure to give us a, uh, a like on YouTube, like on Facebook too. Um, and if you, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of entertaining content. We've been, uh, we just celebrated our two year anniversary yesterday on YouTube. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. So, man. and we're, we're still coming along. So, uh, but be sure to hit that. So, uh, Thank you all. Have a great day. And uh, thanks again to our moderator, uh, Lindsay. Uh, she has been um, such a, I, I, an amazing, amazing supporter and person for Country Road since day one. She has been everything from my right hand to a mod to, I mean, she's done all kinds. It goes on and on. Um, so big shout out to Lindsay. And uh, Kathy gives us a big uh, thumbs up. All right, so uh, thanks again, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, always, always a pleasure. I, I shake your hand. That's right. Social distancing, brother. Great. Stay <laughs> safe and stay healthy, everybody.
God bless everybody. God bless.